Hello everybody, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer, and I have a new video for you. This is going to cover audio filters in Twitch Studio Beta. Now, Twitch Studio is still only available to a select number of people who have signed up for the beta testing, but I imagine that the beta will be live here soon for everybody. And one of the things people are going to need to know about, especially since Twitch Studio is geared toward new streamers, is the audio filters and how to set them up because you don't really expect new streamers to understand compression, noise gates, noise suppression. So this is something that's really gonna make your microphone sound a lot better. So I wanna go through those settings, show you what I've done. I've also recorded some clips of my broadcast microphone in various uh, stages of setting up these filters so you can hear what it sounds like raw with no filters all the way to the end where we've got everything added so then you can determine okay this is what I want to do with my microphone or this is what I don't want to do so let's go ahead and get into the tutorial all right everybody so the first clip I'm going to play you here is strictly my raw microphone going through Twitch Studio I want you to listen to it and kind of hear everything going on. Listen to the microphone itself, but also listen to any noises that you may hear. Uh, I will go ahead and tell you, you will hear this steady kind of humming noise in the background that I believe is one of two things. It's either a fan on my gaming PC because I was recording this off of my gaming PC, so I had to have it running, or two, it may be some sort of preamp noise on my microphone preamp. Okay, so either way, listen to it and you'll hear what I'm talking about. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So that last clip had some things in there I left in the clip. I wanted you to hear the dead space so you can kind of hear the background noise, get an idea of the level of it. And also, I left the sniffles at the end because that's something that we'll be able to filter out here later using noise gate, which I'll show you how to do. But let's talk about compressor first because compressor is really something that everybody should be using. The purpose of a compressor is to basically allow your viewer to set a, a level of volume so that they don't and they don't have to continually change it. Say if you get really loud all of a sudden, or if you're really soft, they won't have to change their volume level because the compressor is going to bring that audio into a certain band of volume. And it's going to be something that you can set and control on both the upper end and the lower end. So the upper end, you're going to set a limiter, basically, that when you yell real loud or say you sneeze or something like that and it goes above a certain threshold, it's going to attenuate that signal. It's going to lower that signal by a certain ratio that you set so that it doesn't blow out your ears for your viewer okay so on the low end you're going to be able to add makeup gain and it's going to bring the lower volume levels that you have in your audio signal up so that then it's under it's in that defined band and it's going to really help your viewers so that they can set a volume level and leave it and it's it's really nice and now you have to use compressor on your microphone if you really want to make it uh, nice. And it does give a nice, more professional effect to it, provided you don't overdo it, which I'll show you here in a minute. So let's go ahead now and listen to the clip of my broadcast microphone. It will be normalized to minus 3 dB. Other than that, the only thing is, is the compressor. And we'll listen to that, and then what we'll do now is we'll go into Twitch Studio and then show you the compressor settings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, so let's talk about compression. Now, this last file was compressed, uh, and you shouldn't have really noticed a ton of difference between it and the file before. Uh, but it was compressed so that if I had something like a sneeze or something like that, it would not have uh, gone too much louder 
than what the regular signal was. And it's important that you have your threshold set properly. So how do you do this? Well, you have the slider here on Twitch Studio. And what you do is you need to figure out where your normal speaking level is at. And you can use the VU meter inside of Twitch Studio to figure that out. And then that's basically about where you want your threshold set, maybe a little bit below that, so that if you get loud by accident or you sneeze or you drop something, uh, some transient sound, it'll start attenuating or lowering the volume of that signal once it goes below or above the threshold that you set. And how much that compression, how much compression there is depends on the ratio that you set. So ratio, normally for something like a voice audio, somewhere between three to one to five to one. I like setting mine to four to one. So basically if, if you have your, your levels go above your threshold, for every, for a four to one ratio, for every four decibels above threshold, the compressor will reduce the overall limit of your upper end by one dB. So for every four dB above, it reduces it by one dB. So if you were using a two to one ratio, for every two dB, it would, above threshold, it would reduce it by one dB. So it's a little bit more aggressive if you use a two to one compared to a four to one. Threshold's important because you do not want to set it too low and you don't want to set it too high because if you set it too high, it's not going to do any effect. If you set it too low, it's going to be too much compression and it's going to affect the sound quality of your signal, which we will show you here in a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, so listening to that, hopefully you're listening with a good set of headphones. But there's two things to point out. First of all, the signal sounds a, a little overdriven, not really clipping per se, but it's, it's really loud. And two, there's a tinniness that you hear. It's very subtle, but it is there. It's almost like it's too digital. It doesn't really sound natural. That's an effect of overcompressing the signal. So you want to try to avoid that because uh, it, it does sound really bad and it affects the signal quality. All right, so we talked about threshold, we talked about ratio. Now let's talk about attack and release. All right, so attack is the amount of time it takes to for the compressor to start once it goes above the threshold, once your sound goes above the threshold. Typically, you want your attack to be really low, and the default settings here for 10 milliseconds is perfectly fine. Uh, you want it almost immediate if you go above that threshold. Likewise, your release is the amount of uh, time it takes for the compressor to shut down once it goes back below the threshold. And typically people leave this at about 100, 150 milliseconds. Okay, uh, So the default settings here in Twitch Studio are actually really good. All right. Now, the last thing we'll talk about is makeup gain. The makeup gain is important because for any volume levels that are low, you kind of want them to be brought up some. So makeup gain is nice, and I recommend you have this check because it's going to allow your lower volume levels when you're speaking to kind of come up a little bit, and it'll put it in a nice band of sound so that, again, your viewers do not have to change the volumes if you're too low or too loud, okay? It, you can set a volume level, and it'll be nice when they, you know, the, you have the subtle sounds, they'll still be able to hear it. And when you get too loud, it won't be loud enough where they have to lower the volume. All right. So that is really compression in a nutshell. It's actually really easy to understand. All right. So now let's talk about noise gate. So noise gate is going to be used so that you don't have sounds that you don't want to broadcast go out on your live stream. So for instance, sneezes, uh, keyboard clicks, uh, breathing sounds on your microphone, flagellants don't laugh i've heard it watching a stream before if you don't want those sort of things going out on your stream noise gate is your friend so noise gate's easy to set up so you have an open threshold and you have in the case of twitch studio they call it hysteresis okay or for for sake of making it easy we'll call it closed threshold because that's essentially what it is uh Open threshold is when you want the gate to actually allow sound through. Close 
or hysteresis is when you want the noise gate to activate once the sound goes below the threshold you set. So typically your open threshold set a little higher than your hysteresis or closed threshold. Um, and I typically use a rule of thumb of about four to five dB different. Attack time, hold time, release time. Again, same rules apply as did the compressor. Attack time is how quickly you want the uh, noise gate to, in this case, deactivate. Release time, same thing. Um, you set it and it's the amount of time it takes for the uh, noise gate to reactivate once it's set, the threshold goes below a certain level. So noise gate is important and it really helps out a lot uh, for those sorts of things. A lot of people with mechanical keyboards, for instance, can use noise gate to their advantage to keep the keyboard clicks from happening while you're not talking. Now, you can't get rid of the keyboard clicks while you're talking because your microphone is then open and it's detecting everything it can hear. But when you're not talking, uh, you're not keying audio going into your broadcast just by clicking on your keyboard. Okay, so it's, so it's nice. And I definitely also recommend you running noise gate and setting it properly. You can set noise gate improperly to where um, it cuts your voice off while you're talking. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20. Talking. So it's important to set an open threshold that is you know, where you're making, not making noise or where you're making noise, but it easily picks up your voice. So this is going to take some trial and error. So I recommend you having your microphone set properly, not talk and look at where your audio levels are and then take a measurement of that, just like we showed you before with compressor, and then use that to set where your open threshold is in my... All right, so I am now, first of all, the microphone is going into my recording software separate. So even with the noise gate actually activated, you're going to still hear my microphone. Just look at the visuals on the VU meter, though, for microphone detection. All right, so everything's down. I'm going to now type with my keyboard. I'm going to slam on the space key. Use my, I'm going to use my cursor to kind of mark where it's at. All right, I'm also going to breathe heavy now. All right, so the keyboard clicks are probably the loudest. I'm absolutely pounding them right now. So right there is as loud as it gets. So go up, click, get your reading. It's minus 46. All right, we'll set this back to the normal level of minus 6. Then we'll go to the threshold here. And we will take this to a minus, let's go to about a minus 37. And the hysteresis will set to 4 dB below that. So we'll go to minus 41. And that should still keep the keyboard clicks out attack time will leave at 25 actually let's, let's go ahead and throw this down low let's make this five milliseconds hold time and the release will be fine where they are so now let's click the keyboard again remember watch the visual don't listen to the mic because the mic is just showing you that i'm actually doing it so i just got a couple clicks there in the end where i was really pounding on it hard but under normal key typing you don't have anything so there you go it works good and my audio is coming in you see me talking it's not cutting out and i can continue to breathe and talk and do all this stuff and there's no visuals i'm breathing hard there so yeah there you go that's what the noise gate does for you all right, so the last thing we need to talk about is noise suppression. So noise suppression, all it does is it helps to remove background noise that you do not want going into your microphone. Think, things not including something like this where you have no control over it. All right, so noise suppression removes background noise. Things like fans, uh, air conditioning, uh, your uh you know, your, your CPU cooler in your gaming PC, for instance, that's my issue. Uh, 
it takes and removes those things. And I think it does it mainly by just EQing uh, certain frequency bands that are known for these offenders. Okay, so, uh, and then how are, the amount of gain is applied depending on how much you need. So you have four settings here. You got low, you got moderate, you got high, and you got very high. Personally for me, I found that low and moderate work really well. High and very high, you start to degrade the sound quality of your, your actual uh, commentary, your microphone, whatever. So I've, I've actually been using moderate, and I have not heard personally where it has degraded my microphone quality. Uh, if you start to hear that tinny kind of digitally sound, then you're, you're adding too much suppression. You need to cut it back. But uh, I've found that low and moderate work really well. So you can use one of those two settings uh, and see if that works for you. But if you do not need noise suppression, if you don't have any background noise getting picked up by your microphone, then don't use it. Uh, this is only if you need to, but I have found that uh, low and moderate work really well for getting rid of uh, those constant noises like fans. Now, this works a lot better than OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. Uh, the filtering that they use there for noise suppression, if you turn it on, even if you have zero decibels of effect turned on, you can hear that it just degrades your sound it gives you that tinny kind of digital sound that you really don't want but twitch studio they have nailed it it works really good um and i kind of wish the obs would maybe update and figure out how twitch studio did it because twitch studio has nailed the noise pressure it's the best that i've heard uh it even rivals uh just being able to do it through something like uh adobe audition um uh, it really does a good job and it's super simple to set up so now here's a clip of my microphone that uh will have all of the effects added including noise suppression so you can kind of hear what the finished product is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, so yeah, that's uh, that's it. I mean, the the filters that they have given you in Twitch Studio uh, really helps a lot with improving your microphone. It's going to improve the experience for your viewers too, simply by doing those few things that we have shown you here in this tutorial. So I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, it is now, see, it is still the 23rd here. Uh, it is pretty late at night. But if I do not talk to you guys again before Christmas, I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a safe new year. Uh, the next video will be a sponsored video on a mobile streaming app that I think a lot of you people will be interested in who are doing vlogs with their mobile phone. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, again, have a Merry Christmas. Be safe out there. And make sure if you've enjoyed this video, if you've liked it, make sure you hit the thumbs up because that will help me out a lot. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check me out on Twitter at the Frugal Streamer. Actually, that's not it. <laughs> check me out on Twitter. 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 Check me out on Twitter at frugal underscore streamer, or if you want to check out my personal one there where I talk about all kinds of things, politics, gaming, uh, opinion, culture, whatever, check me out at TFS underscore pun. Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, have a great, safe weekend. Be good. We'll see you later.